What's up, world? It's your boy, Sporty Black, checking in again. I got the lovely Shannon Keith in the building, R&B recording artists representing one strong team, man. I know it. <laughs> what been going on with you, Shannon? Yeah, I've been working, still working. That's um, right, that's right. I got my uh, two children now. Yeah. That has come up in watching me in, in, in the music, trying to get into the music business and... Now my oldest daughter, Caitlin, she yeah. sings and raps. Yeah. She's in the R and B neo soul field. Okay. And then my son, he's uh trying to come up in hip hop and he's eighteen years old and okay. he he five. So yeah, you know, yeah. I found out they had the passion for it. So I've been kinda like behind the scenes okay. trying to push them a lot, doing stuff for other, you know, yeah. artists and everything. How long have you been doing it? Like around what what age or what year, whatever you got into it? I got into it, sit into the R and B. Yeah. I got into R and B around age sixteen. Oh, okay. Uh, although I was raised in church, you know, yeah. in a spiritual home, I had to sneak off to the studios to record yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to record my R and B tracks. But yeah. I've been dibbling and dabbling ever since I was like fifteen years old. I've uh, I've dealt with a lot of different artists, yeah. you know, indie. And, and, and I've dealt with a couple of uh, actual mainstream artists. artists. Yeah, mainstream okay. artists. You know, um, I started out going to T Rock. He's with, um, he was with. 3 6 Yeah, Mafia. 3 6 yeah, Mafia. Okay. Rock. I started off with him and his producer at the time, Adonis, okay. uh, uh, the certified specialist. She's she fine. She just on the same level level I put her on there with Bill. Yeah. Me and her was just like me and Bill was. Okay. And uh she fired I started off with them and then when I got uh came to Carrollton, I was introduced to, to Bitter Beats. Okay. And uh, you know, the commute thing was kind of had to make a pimp decision that I wanna keep going all the way from Carrollton to Flat Show Road in, in, in Atlanta, or did I want to go down the street, Christian Lane, so you know, <laughs> and he did just as good. He so, did, yeah, shout yeah. out to uh, super producer, yes. Bitter Beats. shout out to Bitter Beats. Yeah, he, um, he's he been very influential in the whole yeah. movement of West Georgia, you know yes, what I mean? Yes, he has. He's very critical, I think right now he's residing in Albany down in Doherty County, man, but uh, shout out to Bill Beats. He really helped me in my career a lot. Yes. So we definitely got to shout him out, um, Black Hole Productions. Yeah, he down there making some major moves, too. Oh, I already telling. know. I already know how he get out. I already know. Yeah, he make, down there making major moves. So. so so who was some of your musical influences coming up? My main influence when I was a child all the way up until even now, of course, was the infamous Whitney Houston. Uh, <laughs> Whitney. When I remember when I was like 14, 15 years, 15 years old, no matter where I went, people would ask me to sing her whatever song she had out at the time because yeah. I was going to get every riff just like her That's right. and everything. And then when I got older and started getting into my own feel, I think I kind of kind of start leaning toward Lauren Hill, uh, Faith Evans, believe it or not, mm -hmm. uh, Mary J. I okay. liked her style because even when she first came out, everybody used to say she couldn't sing. Yeah. But I still liked what she was saying and and That's the right. way she her delivery, everything. It was just so street, you know. She bought to me. She bought the street to the yeah. R and B feel. Yeah. It's Mary J. Right? Yeah, Mary J. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keisha Cole reminds me of Mary J. A little yeah, bit she in does. that sense. Right. So. Uh, yeah. So, well, what would be your dream collaboration if you could have any collab with any artist? Who would it be and Bel why? Believe it or not, um, I would love to collaborate with CeeLo. CeeLo Green? <laughs> CeeLo Green. That's right. That's that a has been one of my number one, I mean, I'm his number one fan. He don't know it. Okay. But uh, I love his music from when he was just rapping in the beginning yeah. to when he started. When I heard him sing, and I was like, oh, this nigga can sing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I really started loving CeeLo. And then I would love to do a collaboration, believe it or not, with, I would bring him up on uh, Mr. Big Time. Uh, uh, Run Isley. Oh yeah, Run yeah, Isley. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I gotta do it with okay. the king, right. the king of the king, R. Kelly. Okay. You know, I, I would say R. Kelly, but he he, I don't know yeah, about R. Kelly right now. Yeah, so I, I just go back to the to the original. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Um. So we see that you you know you got your roots in basically I ain't gonna say old school R and B. I'm gonna say more soul. like nineties yeah. R and B and soul or whatever. That's why I feel uh, like the real R and B. Yep, yeah, you're right. So, yeah. 
So as of right now, who are you listening to in 2017? 2017, I listen to Rihanna. Okay, Riri. I listen to Riri. And I like uh, Beyonce. I okay. like, I like, you know, believe it or not, when she first came out with Destiny Child and she went solo, you know, I, I was into groups, so I, I was kind of sour about that. But, you know, you can't deny it makes, she it the queen. It makes sense now. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. She the queen. I, I love, I love mm -hmm. Beyonce. Um, Mary is still relevant. That's and right. she going to always be relevant. I, I was listening to her little new album today, so I really like, you know, I still fuck with Mary. Okay, speaking of new albums, what are you currently working on musically? Well, currently, I like I said, when I first started, I've been doing a lot of features okay. and everything. Helping, um, I was helping King David a okay. lot with, with the new uh, project he's putting out now. Okay. But I've been back in my little, my own lab writing. I've been That's writing, right. and, and this time, the last two projects I put up, with well, the last three projects I put out was mixtapes. Yeah. I'm working toward an album this time. Okay. Speaking of which, um, what about exotic music? I remember you and King David dropped a uh, collaboration project called Exotic Music, yes. right? Uh -huh. um, so, but, you know, me, I'm a fan of both of you guys, you know? Right. And, um, and I, I can't lie. I haven't checked out the whole project. I checked out, you know, Shame bits me. and pieces of it. I, I, I can't <laughs> even lie. But part of that leads me to my next question because me looking from the outside, looking in, it seemed like that that project was one that didn't get a lot of promotion from you guys. Like y'all just dropped it and just kept just kept kept it moving. Right. And I often have said something to him about that. However, um, the explanation that I get is that we're trying to get the right capital and, you know, as far as the money and everything to put behind it. Because oh, okay. when we really push it, because the music is too good to just oh, put yeah, out exactly there and just let it go. Now. Exactly. I was just going to say, there's one thing about you and him yeah. and, uh, individually and collectively. Y'all put out great music. Yes. And um, that's why I was like, damn, they ain't going to get back about this one, you know what I mean? Now, because see, when we put it out, we supposed to have put it out like around wintertime when everybody, you know, got yeah. cuddled up and everything. Because, okay. you know, summertime, really, you know, everybody single and doing their yeah. thing. And we, we was, it's really the city is for lovers. The exactly. That's what I was saying. Then, you know, with, with you guys, most of the time when, you know, y'all drop a project, there's a couple videos coming yeah. out. You know what I mean? It's just a lot it's of still promotion. coming. It's okay, still coming. Cool. We're just really taking our time with okay, this one because yeah. it's just, I put too much into this one as far as the lyrics, yeah, writing, and okay. arrangements, and everything. And he did too. And we don't want to just, like the last project I put out before that, uh, which was my solo project, Free. Yeah. Now um, listen to that one. Now, I did good with Free. Free, I pushed that, uh, my single, The mm -hmm. One, I pushed that one oh, I love that song. to the limit. I love that song. And and I did well with that CD, uh, with that uh, project, because when I, I ordered my first 500 copies, I had um, I was sold out within like a month, month exactly. and a half. So exactly. if I would have kept going, ain't no telling, you know. Exactly. It was kind of so like. So I started doing an online promotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. That, uh, that came out, you know, around the same time King David and myself, he, King David dropped this six and yeah, money. Yeah, six and money. Then I dropped the crap music too. Mm -hmm. And I remember around that era, around that time, you was pushing, doing your thing with your uh, album, your CD, and it was, you know, selling good, everything mm -hmm. was going good, as well as King David, you right. know, as far as online, because he had it on live mixtapes and Spin Rilla, the numbers was doing great, right. and then even in the streets, as far as just the hand-to-hand -hand selling the CDs and stuff, you know what I mean? Um, he did very well, so did I, so, yeah, that, that was like a great time period, and then yes, I seen was. him move from that and start on another project and I was like, no man, I think you need to keep pushing push it more, push this it one. More. That's what you know I keep I mean? telling everybody that I work with. I yeah. think that's one of our weaknesses and I, you know, I, I, I'm not afraid to say what my weaknesses is because I'm that real. Yeah. But me and the people that I work with, they're so talented. Now one thing I have to say and be honest about David, David is so talented yeah, he's great. that he put out 
it's just like music after music. He might put a, a song out today, and three hours later, he right now he might say it's hot, and then yeah. three hours <laughs> later he'll write something else that he feel hot and be like, okay, that song ain't good enough because it ain't yeah. as good as this one. Because exactly. there's so much music coming exactly. out, and it's like one thing that we need to do. Because I even told him I was like, one day, if we did get signed. We got music. Yeah. We music got quality on, music. 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 Right. I mean, music on top of music on top of music because we will put out a project, we'll we'll work with it for a minute, and then next thing you know, we're on to the next thing because it's all to us because yeah. we got so much more to give. Yeah. But that's one thing we need to do is spend I, more time promoting that one. Exactly. Exactly. And um. But I'm still that. getting numbers and 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 getting royalties off for of free because I yeah. had free free is on um. On um, iTunes and all that stuff through Reverb, so yeah. I still get the little, you know, the little distribution that's right. checks and stuff. That's from right. That. And that's that's the thing I think, um, because you was one of the first pe people that told me that that was one of my faults that I I give up on projects too soon, yes. trying to go on to the next one. And you know, I see I'm I'm watching how people you know work their music, work the projects in the industry. For as like people a lot of time focus on a single. Right. You know what I'm saying? The project, they drop the project, it's cool, then they'll work on a single at a time, you know right. what I mean? And they'll push it to, you know, the max. Right. And um, so, you know, that's definitely something, you know, us as independent artists got to learn to focus more on right. paying attention to that single yes. because it's easier to work one song than it is to work a whole project. Right. It's more right. easy. I agree with you 100% there. But uh, but yeah, definitely. Speaking of reverb, uh, for a long time, almost any time I go on there and check the R and B, any stats, anything like that, you are always the, at number one. Check it now, I'm still number one. I, I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like you always number one. And, I got um, a big fan base. On you there. do. You really yeah. do. You really do. Um. And um, so yeah, just let the people know where they can find you at on Reverb Nation. Yeah, Reverb Nation, you can find me at ReverbNation.com forward slash Shannon Keith Williams. Okay, okay. Yeah, check her out. She got great music, R&B, as well as some gospel music on there too. Right. Uh, so, music. Um, a lot of people don't know you are actually the epitome of an artist, but also a musician. Yes, I am. Um, yeah, speak about some of the instruments and stuff you play, and uh, you know, just you know, basically tell them a little bit about you know the live performances and things of that nature. Because okay. with you, you more than just a singer, right? You know, yes. you got a lot going on. Well, um, of course, I started. In, my whole family is musical. You know, as far as musicians, from the lead to the bass guitar, I have. Uh, family members that play multiple instruments. I play uh, keyboard, flute, uh, piano. I play um, clarinet. I also play xylophone, believe okay. it or not. <laughs> so do you do you still get booked every Sunday in churches? I have a church that I play for every, oh, every single Sunday. Sunday. Y'all hear that? And, uh, minister music, I deal with uh, voices. I teach voices, choirs, uh, arrangements, everything. Anything that have to do with music. I even though I have I have a lead voice and I'm a lead singer, I love working with background, okay. background vocals, making sure that that everything in the background is perfect for the leader, you know. So, and gospel music is where my roots are. Yeah, yeah. My roots are in gospel music. I've been in gospel music ever, ever since I was like five, six years old, been singing mm -hmm. in grown, you know, the, the yeah, adult yeah. choirs and exactly. everything. And I was a child, so and I started playing for churches when I was like 12, 13. Yeah. And that's what I've done my whole life. Every yeah. Sunday, you can see me on piano yeah, <laughs> in somebody, church. Somebody church. Everybody, yes, everybody. Yes. Right, so what's your favorite thing about music? If you can just describe if it's one thing that you just love the most about music. I love... It's, it's so hard to put it in one. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. But the main thing I love about music is how it controls um, the emotions. Okay. An environment, how it sets the environment. Yeah, you're right about that. It it sets the environment for so many situations. Exactly, exactly. Because you know, I can be in certain moods. It's according to what music I put in that can help me get out that mood. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? I did that, yeah. And that's somewhat like what I do when I'm at church on Sunday. I'm a church musician, and I play at the church I play for. Music don't stop. 
the yeah. music keep going. And and if my pat if the pastor is just talking, I have to have music from where he's just talking. It's low key. You know, low key. Okay. Or whatever. Yeah. And then I gotta know when he get excited to and get I'll excited music. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhat like on how the T V like on, on, on movies and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta know how to 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 set the environment. Music sets the environment. So it's to crazy. me, without it's music, crazy. yeah, the world would be Oh my yeah. God! A yeah, terrible you right about that because I know when I go to church, man, it's like when somebody go to catch the Holy Ghost, it be like a yeah. lead up to it. Then when they yes. catch it, then the music just drop. Yes, and I'm telling you, as <laughs> long as that music going, they going. Oh, man, that's wild. But yeah, you are so yes. right about that right there, Shane. Yes. Yes. You are so right. And yeah. I am true to the true art of music. Now, yeah. I love you know a lot of the new music of today, but I think a lot of the music that we hear mainstream is controlled by or influenced by what the people might want to hear. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of artists are being true to themselves. Yeah, yeah you're right about that because at the end of the day, I think a lot of people are compromising their creativity and exactly. authenticity to mm -hmm. fit with what's hot and trendy. Right. right. You know what I mean? Like, right. uh, I was talking about it the other day. I heard a song from T.I. And, and he was featured with Young Joy and some other young cat, man. And, and it really disappointed me. Because, you know, T.I. don't hardly ever disappoints. No. But not. that dude, he was trying to rap like the Migos or Lou Uzi Bird or somebody. Yes. And it, and it just wasn't yes. him. Yes. I'm yes. like, what the hell is this, dude? You know. They it, didn't listen to uh, Snoop when he tried to tell him. Man, y'all can't do what these kids you know what doing. Exactly. Because, you know, don't, don't chase the wave. Right. Don't chase the exactly. wave. Stay true to who you are what you do because once you start doing that you trying to chase the wave and I guess trying to captivate mm -hmm. a newer younger audience you start losing your core audience exactly and then once you do that it's really over for you because at the end of the day um, when you're a mainstream artist when when you ain't popping mainstream mm -hmm. as long as you got your true core fans you can always be able to get a check Exactly. You feel me? So <laughs> exactly. once you cross over and basically sell out yeah. for that mainstream chick, that shit is on temporary. Yeah. Because it's all about who's the most popular. At that time, but they exactly. Will, exactly. They'll get uh, rid of your ass quick like they did Fetty Wap. Yeah, you feel Lord, me? his eye got gone. You feel me? <laughs> yes. Like they did Rich Homie Corn. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So... My son just asked today, what happened to Rich Homie? Exactly. Like, I don't so know. it's like you got to stay true to your core fan base. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, and I think a lot of them people, they find it out, but it's kind of like they find it out, you know, through trial and error. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Now they're in a situation where they're scrambling, trying to win back their core fan base. Right. But once you lose that, it's really a wrap. You it really wanna, is. Yeah, you I gotta mean, try something else now. Yeah, <laughs> get you field. another song like that. Yeah, one of the next, time. the next hot thing. You gotta do some, man. Mm -mm. But uh, but yes, Shannon, it's been an absolute pleasure. You dropping by, you know, speaking with us. Yes. And um. So again, you know, just let these people know where they can find you at for social media if they want to follow you, and um, you know, just you know, just see what you got going on. Um, like I said before, Reverb Nation, I'm ReverbNation.com, Shannon Keith Williams. Facebook, uh, Facebook.com, Shannon Wakona. And on, on Instagram, I am Instagram.com, Shannon Keith Williams. You can find me uh, or just Google me, Shannon okay. Keith R&B. And Shannon our Keith. The whole line going to yeah, come Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's even better. Yeah, just Google Spinrilla, her. I'm on Spinrilla, on Dat Piff. I got uh, projects on, um, just, just Google me. Yeah, just like Google said, Shannon Google. Keith and all kinds of stuff will pop up because she's been putting in a lot of work, y'all. Yeah, videos, and YouTube, yeah, everything. Yeah, check out on YouTube. She got several videos and I speak very highly, highly of this woman because this is like one of the best, most professional um, R&B singers that I've ever encountered. You know, she's taught me a lot and I've seen her work. She, she can really get out. She really does her thing. 
And when y'all go check out her music, you're going to be blown away. Mm-hmm. And for all you out there that really like that soul for R&B kind of music from like yeah. the 90s, that 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 real the golden Touch your era, heart soul. man, look here, y'all check her out, man. Yes. And I'm telling you, you, you will not be disappointed. So Google Shannon Keith and follow her on all social media platforms and go check out all her music, especially her um, last solo project, Free. Go on YouTube yes. and check out that video. I'm the one. I guarantee you'll love it. <laughs> Thank you. But um, with that right there, man, no further ado, um, we out of here. <laughs>